This is the Raspberry Pi Zero 2, and here's what it looks like on the inside. It's more than twice as fast as the original Pi Zero courtesy of a new custom chip made by Raspberry Pi. But this chip hides some clever engineering and makes the Pi Zero 2 hardware compatible with the older Pi Zeros. It costs 15 bucks, and we're gonna run through everything. I put it through its paces, even building this retro gaming handheld with it, and I literally x-rayed the thing to show you how it works. First, let's get the specs out of the way. Inside their custom Raspberry Pi branded chip, there are actually two stacked dies, or is that dice? On the bottom is the same SOC used in the Pi 3B, a BCM2710, but its CPU is underclocked at one gigahertz to keep the Pi 2 from throttling due to overheating. And isn't the Pi Zero W also clocked at one gigahertz? How is the Pi Zero 2 so much faster? Well, clock speed isn't everything. We'll get into performance and also try out a little overclocking later. On top of the SOC, in the same chip, there's 512 megs of LPDDR2 SDRAM. It's not much, but if you want a $15 computer, you're not gonna get the moon. Moving on to Wi-Fi, there's a new Wi-Fi chip under this shield, and it performs better than the similar model in the Zero W, but it's still not as fast as the one in the Pi 4, and it still only works on 2.4 gigahertz networks. As far as I.O. goes, the layout is identical to the Zero W. It has a mini CSI camera connector on one edge and micro SD on the other. It has a full 40 pin GPIO header. It has micro USB power input, a micro USB plug for data, and a mini HDMI plug for display. Since the size and layout's the same, every Pi Zero case and accessory I have works just as well on the Zero 2. But I do wish I could use USB-C for power in a micro HDMI port like the Pi 4 has, so I could reduce the cable clutter. But I get why they did it. I, I can't have everything. But the physical similarities hide the fact that there's a lot of differences on the Zero 2. I kinda wonder if Raspberry Pi saw Apple's M1 and how the RAM was on the same die next to it, and they, they must have been like, you know what would be even better? Stack it on top, inside the same chip. Big brain thinking right there. But really, the reason they did it was because with their volumes, they can finally design a custom chip that's more efficient than the old package-on-package -package design that they used in older models. The Pi Zero always had a RAM chip stacked on top of the CPU since there's literally nowhere to stick the RAM chip while keeping the bottom perfectly flat. But now it's all one integrated custom chip, just like Apple's M1. I really wanted to see how it looks on the inside though, and there are two things you can do to see the inside of one of these chips. You could try dissolving the chip's casing with some really nasty chemicals. Red sure Jeff wanted to do that, but I told him no. So I did the next best thing, blasted it with some x-rays. Here's an x-ray of the Pi Zero 2 from an angle, and if you look really close, you can see the two layers of leads, some heading down to the bottom die and others up to the top. Pretty cool setup, and technically the RAM is closer to the CPU here, so data access could be a fraction of a picosecond faster, but with the way LPDDR memory works, that doesn't actually make a difference. Sorry to break it to you. And after seeing this, the chip name RP3A0-AU got me thinking. Is there any significance to the last bit, the AU? Well, it turns out there is. I asked Simon Martin, Raspberry Pi's principal engineer and chip designer about it, and he said there are over 800 gold bond wires inside the chip, and they stuck with gold instead of copper to ensure a longer life. And of course, gold symbol on the periodic table is AU. Now, I was gonna wrap things up there, but looking back at these x-ray pictures, something else caught my eye. Look under the Pi chip. Do you see anything interesting? Hidden away in the ball grid array, on the bottom of the chip where nobody will ever see it, is a teensy tiny Raspberry Pi logo. How fun is that? I had to know more, so I emailed Simon again, and he told me the Pi logo in the BGA ball out was just a bit of fun. He said since the middle connections are just for power and ground, they don't have to be placed as carefully as the high-speed connections around the outer parts of the chip. So he had a little fun putting them in a shape we all know and love. Just like the original Macintosh had signatures from its design team in the internal case, this little mark shows a bit of playfulness and pride in a way that few people will ever appreciate. Now, design is one thing, but what I really want to know is how it performs. And in summary, a lot better than the Pi Zero. To check the CPU speeds, I ran three basic performance tests. Video compression, MP3 compression, and a PHP benchmark. For video compression, I couldn't even get the benchmark to run on the Pi Zero W at all, but one interesting thing to note here is that with CPU intense tasks, 
64-bit OSs are a little faster. And yeah, the Zero 2 now supports 64-bit Pi OS. Moving on to the MP3 encoding, the Zero 2 is more than twice as fast and can be more than three times faster if you overclock it with the 64-bit OS. For PHP Bench, the results are similar, twice as fast at base clock, but three times faster on overclock. Besides being at least twice as fast, my main takeaway is the Zero 2 supports 64-bit Pi OS, which was impossible on the original Zero's older CPU. I had to do a couple hacks to get it working pre-launch, but by the time you're watching this video, it might just work out of the box. But there's a bigger problem on this Pi, and it's especially bad on the 64-bit Pi OS. It only has 512 megs of RAM. For some benchmarks, I had to add swap space to the Pi so the sneaky oom um killer, or out of memory killer, wouldn't kill him. And some 64-bit apps showed weird errors even with more swap space. Since 64-bit memory addresses are larger, 512 megs of RAM can be a little tight. So is the Pi Zero 2 going to be great for things like video compression or using as a desktop computer running Chrome? No, not in most cases, especially not with 64-bit Pi OS, but that's not what it's meant for. I do wish there were a gig of RAM, but I can't have everything. But back to the CPU. As I mentioned, you can overclock it, and I tested both 1.2 and 1.4 gigahertz, but if you try this, make sure you add a good heatsink or fan. The 1.2 gigahertz overclock was pretty stable, but the 1.4 gigahertz overclock resulted in some strange behavior and shutdowns when I just used a fan without a heatsink. I ran my stress NG script to measure temperatures in each condition and well, here are the results. First, even at the base clock, when you run the Pi inside an enclosure, it will throttle. After about five minutes of heavy activity, the Pi started throttling back to 800 megahertz. Now, looking at the overclock, it's obvious why you need better cooling. The Pi Zero's main board just doesn't have enough thermal mass to keep the chip running hot, even for short bursts. It started throttling after about a minute, and that was just 1.2 gigahertz. But as I said, this Pi's not meant to be a powerhouse. You should probably accept the fact that it's more than twice as fast as the original Zero and use a different Pi if you really need compute power. And I'll quickly show the results from my networking benchmarks. Basically, the Pi Zero 2's newer CPU and slightly improved Wi-Fi chip are able to get about 50% faster Wi-Fi and 20% faster wired performance with a USB gigabit Ethernet adapter. The extra power on the Zero 2 comes in handy if you want to build a retro game handheld like I did. I got lucky and was able to buy a Null 2 kit before they were out of stock, and I installed the Zero 2 in it. It works great, though I had to build my own RetroPie image for it since the Zero 2 is so new. And yes, I recompiled the kernel a few times to get Wi-Fi working. Redshirtjeff.com. But the Null 2 highlights one good reason the Zero 2 was made hardware compatible with the original Zero. Hundreds of really cool builds that integrate a Pi Zero, like this Null 2, will work perfectly with the Pi Zero 2. And the Zero 2's better performance means games that were iffy on the original Zero run great on the Zero 2. Every NES, Sega Genesis, and PlayStation game I tried seems to run at 60 frames per second with no problem. Nintendo 64 games were still a little bit choppy, but at least playable. They were a nightmare on the original Zero. But this video is not about emulation or the Null 2. Check back next week for a full video on my one-of-a-kind Zero 2 Null 2. The last thing I wanted to test was power consumption. Many people use the Zero in builds where they need more speed than a microcontroller, but want enough battery life to do something useful, like play games on a portable handheld or run a remote time-lapse camera. The Zero W could sip 80 milliamps at idle, about 0.4 watts. At full tilt, running a CPU stress test and using Wi-Fi, it took about 160 milliamps, or 0.83 watts. The Zero 2 seems to use a minimum of 120 milliamps at idle, or 0.62 watts, and at full tilt, the thing uses 410 milliamps, or 2.12 watts, meaning it draws 2.5 times more power than the Zero W when you're pushing it hard. But you do get a lot more work done per cycle with that higher power draw. If you disable Wi-Fi and HDMI, you can get the thing to idle at about 100 milliamps, but Really, if tens of milliamps are making a big difference in your life, it's time to look at a microcontroller. So, it performs well compared to the Zero W and has a lot more performance in the tank, at least if you're willing to use more power. But no review of the Zero 2 would be complete without acknowledging alternatives, like the Radsa Zero and Banana Pi M2 Zero. I won't go too deep into these boards since there are already some great reviews like Chris's from explainingcomputers.com. So, check those out if you haven't heard of them. 
The bottom line is this. All three are going to give similar overall performance without any additional cooling at the $15 price point. Even though the RADSA is clocked at 2 GHz, it'll throttle when pushed just like the Zero 2 at higher clocks. Each of these boards offers great hardware specs. In fact, the RADSA Zero includes USB 3 out of the box, so hardware-wise, it still does better than this brand new Pi. But on the software and support side, it's a different ballgame. Since Raspberry Pi has such a vast community and a growing company behind it, the experience with it is objectively better. But would I call the Pi Zero 2 perfect? No. For me, only having an option with 512 megs of RAM kills some of its potential. But the Zero is the king of trade-offs. You can't hit a $15 price point cramming in gigs of RAM and every feature under the sun. And supply will probably be a problem for a while too. Even before the global parts shortage, the Pi Zero was almost perpetually out of stock online. I'm lucky to have a micro center nearby where I can get one at list price, but for many, $15 is more of a suggestion. But you can't blame Raspberry Pi trading. Like everyone this year, they've been struggling to meet demand. I'm happy with the $15 price point though. It's a good middle ground between the minimalist $5 Zero and a $35 Pi 4. Will I be building my next Kubernetes cluster on a Zero 2? No. But will I build some outlandish and wacky projects with it to share with my kids? Heck yeah. Check back next week for my Null 2 video. Until then, I'm Jeff Gearling. The Pi Zero always had a RAM chicks. Chick is a teensy tiny res tiny teensy tiny. How cute is that? More speed than a microcontroller, but microcontroller. Explainingcomputers.com. Will I be building my next Kubernetes? What? Check back next week for my Null 2 video, and until then, I'm, <coughs> I'm coughing.